Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I am going to be stamping because when I saw Colorado Craft Company had this darling kitten, I had to stamp it and paint it. I used an ink that no longer exists. Sorry about that, but like a tan ink will be fine. And I have put these elements so that I can do something in between them. There's going to be some cookie batter in between. And I'm going to be painting it with this Daniel Smith dot card. Now, this is an older palette of mine on this dot card, but I found all of these in a box in the back of the cupboard and decided that they would be a fundraiser. And there may still be some left. This was a week ago when I announced it. I'm hoping they're all sold by now. If not, go get one. I was putting in ATC cards and I said while supplies last, but I kept making them all week long because I wanted everybody who gave to the fundraiser for the International Child Art Foundation to get an ATC. So I put extra work into it. So check and see if there's any of them left. I'll have the link in the doobly-doo. Now, I wanted to show you the dot card and what you do with it, you open up the plastic. You have to open the right side. So I finally did that. I've got dots of paint and I'm ready to go. So let's get started. A word about dot cards. They come with a small dot of paint as well as the names of the pigments and a little information about them. They have a full set of like all the Daniel Smith colors that you can just purchase that full set. I will link to that in the doobly-doo if you want one of those. It's a great way to get a tester of different colors of paint to see what you'd want to buy. Don't buy all of it. I'm just going to say that right now. You don't need all the colors. However, this particular dot card is an artist dot card. It's not a big sheet like the other ones that come in multiple sheet sets. So they have enough room for all the dots. This one is just one of my palettes from a couple of years ago. I haven't had dot cards made from my newer palettes. Just hasn't been a thing I've pursued with them. But this one is used in a new class that you'll see at the end. It's a, a class with lots of cute stuff in it. And you may possibly be able to do most of the class from this dot card. Don't know that for sure because I haven't really tried painting all of it with it, but it at least has the colors in it so you can see whether or not those are colors that you want or do the colors on here, like are they equal to some other colors that you have in your palette already? So that is one of the reasons I'm doing that fundraiser. Now for this kitten, I painted the inside of the glasses with yellow ochre. And then the outside of the kitten is painted with darker colors. And sometimes just to kind of show people that you have a difference between the glass and the not glass area, it's helpful to make the color of the glass different. Uh, you know, a lighter value will help to indicate that there's maybe some light shining on it, a little bit of reflection or something. And I decided I wanted it a little darker, but I didn't want it darker yet. I want to get the context of the entire painting to decide whether or not I need to really get much darker at all, or is that going to be good enough? So you'll see at the end that uh, I will make that decision. For the kitten, I'm using burnt sienna and some burnt umber to do shading. And then I put some water down in that bottom section so that the kitten's mouth and, and chin area ends up going more toward white. And then for the paws, I'll use the same combination of burnt sienna and burnt umber. Now, I'm using two different brushes. One is a number four, this one right here, and then switch over to a number one brush. I don't really use that much because I don't do that much tiny painting unless I'm doing tiny sketchbook work, but it really can help in doing those little tiny hairs on a kitten. The colors I'm using for the spoon are going to be yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And that's when I started thinking, okay, this is going to be interesting to come up with colors for the dough that's going to be in the bowl. Now you could do this instead of doing it in dough colors, you could do it in like whites as if the kitten is in a bowl of flour or something like that. And you could use some gouache in order to cover up the, uh, the line underneath of the chin. 
But what I'm going to do is just spread my color. I'm going to do chocolate chip batter. I'm going to spread my color so it's dark enough in that area that it covers that line. That's one of the reasons I used a lighter ink in order to stamp this so I could cover it more easily. But I was trying to figure out how to use the same colors in the palette, but make them look different enough that the kitten and the cookie dough don't end up looking like they're all one big mush. I don't want this to look like the cat's body or something. I want it to look like dough. So I'm kind of dotting colors in there and just kind of letting them move around. But then I decided I would add a little cobalt blue to it. Now, why cobalt blue? That seems crazy, right? Well, blue and orange are going to be opposite colors on the color wheel, which means they're going to neutralize. So I can get a more neutral color for the cookie dough by adding a little bit of blue. And since I'm working with a dot card, it's a little more difficult to deal with since you, it's, you can, but it's not easy to do. Put a little bit of the colors into a palette and mix them. So I was stuck with mixing them only on the paper. That is one of the downsides to dot cards. You can't mix them separately very easily. But I just kept kind of adding more and more color in, trying to give it some depth by putting darker colors at the very bottom, right where it meets the bowl, and splashing in all these other colors, just letting them move on the paper. And then I dried it so that at least I could start then putting in some sharper texture because I wanted that for the base color and then put in my chocolate chips and just kind of making them different sizes, different shapes. Don't make them look like they're all exact or else it'll look like, I don't know, you have uh, measles on your cookie dough or something. I don't know. <laughs> I did mi try mixing a little bit of color on the paper the burnt sienna and the burnt umber to come up with something in between. I wanted a few sharp lines to indicate that the chocolate chips are set into the dough. It wasn't working all that great. It wasn't looking all that fantastic. So I decided then to use some dry brush. Dry brush is when you don't have as much of the moisture in your brush and you lay your brush kind of scuttling it across the surface. So it just kind of hits the top and gives you a texture. So that maybe texture will be the thing that will make the difference between the kitten and the dough, even though they're using pretty much the same colors. The bowl, of course, has to be yellow because that is my favorite color. And New Gamboge is in this palette. So yay for that. I'm going to put some shine on the outside of the bowl. I want it to be a really translucent type of bowl. And then the darker colors in the center. So I'm painting around a few highlights on these, this ribbing along the bottom of the, or the bottom section of the bowl, the curved section of the bowl, and then letting the, uh, the band going around the top be a little darker and just kind of playing with it and letting the bowl be secondary to the kitten and the cookie dough because those are the really important things. So I'm keeping it much looser. I'm getting much bigger brush strokes using a bigger brush. And this is a number eight, I believe. I will link all my brushes in the doobly-doo down below. Then this is the Aussie Red Gold, which is more of an orangey color. And that's giving me a little more richness, a little more darkness in the color. So you can see where some of the areas are that the paint had dried and other areas where it had not. So then I went in with a little bit more of the new Gamboge to kind of put more paint in there, shrink down the size of some of those highlights because I didn't need them to be quite that strong. But I also wanted them to be nice and uneven. And sometimes that's what's going to make things look realistic. I added a little bit of burnt sienna to just add a little bit more strength to the shading, the shadows and stuff in the center and at the bottom. And kind of played around with it, moving it around. When something is really wet, a large area like this, I tend to really watch it like a hawk. So I was, you know, painting a reflection at the bottom. Sorry, that went off camera. The reflection at the bottom gave me time to just kind of watch the paint and see what was going to happen. And I realized it was still nice and wet. I could put more highlight around the outside edges, I'm just using a baby wipe to pull off a little bit of that color and then go back into a few areas to affirm them. That started giving me a little more of the glow and the reflection on the bowl and yet keeping it really soft and loose. 
So that was all done. Added some yellow for the bow on the kitten. I know everybody else is going to be like painting their bow pink. I realize that. I will use some pink, some quinacridone rose to uh, put the nose on my kitten. Switched from my number four to my number one brush because realized that I was not going to be able to get that fine detail in there. And then added the quinacridone rose also for the glasses. And having a thin paintbrush is going to really help for a detail like the glasses. Could leave them as they are and you could change them into sunglasses. Put this kitten on a beach somewhere and just make the whole thing uh, dark in the, um, the glass portion. Leaving the highlights of course. And then you could leave the the outside edges of the glasses, the frame, you could leave it white. And that would be great if you have enough color in the kitten and in the glasses to make that work. So next up, I just added a few more little details. The base of the mixing bowl seemed to need a little bit of anchor down there. So I added a little bit more color into the glasses since they're a real focal point for me in this painting. It's the thing that attracted me to the kitten. And Started with the yellow ochre, but needed just a bit of the burnt sienna to make it look like you're looking through clear glass to see a bit more of the color of the kitten, but it was still lighter and brighter since it was going through the glass. Then I put the card together by adding it to some paper layers, dimensional adhesive. I even added another paper layer on the inside since my card base was on the uh, lightweight side. And I made another card, but I want to invite you along with that card to come to a Zoom session. It's going to be free. There will be a small fee for the replay version of this, but why not just come to the live session? You can subscribe to my newsletter to get the date, time, etc. information. You can join Art Venture for more information over in the events tab there. But we're going to paint this in two different ways. At least I hope we're going to get to two. And I'll have you do the stamping and stuff ahead of time so you're ready to just paint when we get going. And we're going to do two settings. One we're going to do in the kitchen. One we're going to do in the potting shed. Yes, I said potting shed. So it's going to be fun. Come and join me. It'll be a blast. Now on Monday, I'm also releasing some new classes. And this one, since it has cute stuff in it, and I know you're watching this video because you like cute stuff, this is a really great class called Imaginary Creatures. I've had it in colored pencil and in alcohol marker, and now it's going to have a sibling in watercolor. It's gonna be a level two class. So even if you're relatively new with watercolor, you should be just fine in this course. This uses the colors that are in that dot card. I don't know that there's enough color on the dot card to do the entire class. However, you can substitute other colors and I do list some alternate colors in the pre-class lesson there. So that launches on July 1st on Monday. For today, go over to my blog because you'll see pictures of these cards and you'll also get a chance to enter to win fabulous prizes from Colorado Craft Company. So go do that and I will see you right back here on July 1st for the kickoff of World Watercolor Month. I'm so excited. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.